Hi, this is Mr. West, and today you're watching a walkthrough video for fractions to decimals and percents, sheet one. This, of course, is from mathsamanders.com. They have tons of great resources, so make sure to check them out. Now, with this worksheet, I really like it because we're going from a fraction to a decimal to percent, which are all very useful things, and we're specifically going in this order today. And this is a great worksheet that kind of lays out how do you do this. So we're going to start with the fraction. And then what we're gonna do is we divide the numerator by the denominator to get the decimal. Now I'm gonna show you another way to do that uh, with some of these. It's a nice shortcut that makes it a lot quicker. Once we have our decimal, we're gonna multiply that by 100. And I have here that you're gonna move the decimal place twice to the right. We're gonna make this number bigger to get our percent. Okay, so I'm gonna show you how to do that. We're just gonna start with 3 fourths. And I'm gonna come back to 1 half in a little bit. Okay, so I'm gonna start with 3 fourths. The method it says here is divide the numerator by the denominator. So if I go over here to 3 fourths, this is what it looks like. Okay, 3 over 4 is the same thing as 3 divided by 4 in this long division format. And you should check out my long division videos if you haven't seen them already. But the bottom line is this is the process. We try to see how many times 4 goes into 3. It goes in 0 times. Uh, 3 is not a multiple of 4. The only thing we can do is get close to it by doing 4 times 0, and that's, of course, 0. We find out what the remainder is, and it's 3. But what we want to do is we want to figure out uh, how far we can go before there's no remainder. So I'm going to put a decimal place down, and essentially what that means is I'm putting an imaginary 0 here. I'm going to drop this 0 down because I need to make this number bigger in order for that 4 to fit in. So I put the zero down there, and now the number is 30. How many times does four go into 30? That goes in seven times. And what does that equal? It's 28. Four times seven equals that 28. I subtract it, see what the difference is, and I get zero. Now, again, I'm gonna keep going until I don't have a remainder, which means my remainder is zero. And I haven't, got that hap haven't had that happen yet. So I have another zero that I'm going to drop down and place next to the two, and now it's 20. How many times does four go into 20? And it goes in five times. That number is 20. That's seven times, uh, not seven, sorry. I meant five times four, and that's 20. And guess what? I got a remainder of zero. So I'm done here because I didn't have anything left. I forgot to write that this was zero times four. So I have nothing left, so my decimal is 0 0.75. That may look familiar because if we have three quarters, Okay. Each one of these is a quarter, and we have three of them. That means we would have 75 cents, and that's what 75 cents look like. That's one way to imagine that. Okay. Now, to find the percent, what you can do is you can multiply this by 100, and anytime you multiply 100, essentially what you're doing is I wrote in green, you're going to move the decimal place over twice to the right. So I move it over not once, but I move it over twice, and it becomes 75. The, te the decimal is technically there. We don't need that .0 there because it's just the same value. And then we put our percent sign and we're done. So that's the process, it's not too bad. I'm gonna show you a shortcut now that makes it a little bit more easy. So a shortcut that I like with a lot of these numbers is if the denominator is a multiple of 100, watch how this works. So what I'm gonna do here is if I see that two uh, is a factor of 100, I'm gonna see what do I multiply two by to get to 100. And that, of course, is 50. 2 times 50 equals 100. And what I do to the bottom, I also have to do to the top. 1 times 50 gives me 50. And then I can just read this as a decimal. I have 50 one hundredths. How would I write 50 one hundredths as a decimal? Just like this. This is the hundredths place right here, hundredths. And I have 50 of them, 50 one hundredths. And that's how you would say that number. So 0 0.5. And of course, if I multiply by 100, if I want it to become a percent, I move it over twice to the right, and this number becomes, I almost wrote 75 again, 50%. So I have 50% for this one. And that works for any of these denominators that has uh, a factor uh, that's a factor of 100. So this one is, I can make this 100, I want it to be 100. And the reason why I cho choose 100 is because that's easy to express as a decimal, hundredths, and then also percents. Okay, because if we have 50 over 100, percents are out of 100, that's 50%. So what do I multiply 5 by to get to 100? I multiply this by 20. So I need to multiply this by 20, and I get 40 out of 100. 
that's gonna give me 0 0.40. You can write that as 0 0.4, obviously, and then this becomes 40%. So it's very quick and easy. Instead of using long division, that's a quick way. Seven over 10, that's one that has 100 as a multiple. Um, sorry, 10, yeah, 10 is a factor of 100. So 100 is a multiple of 10. Wanted to say it two different ways at the same time. So I multiply this by 10. I also have to multiply the top by 10, and I get 70 over 100. So if I have 70 over 100, what would that be? That's 70 one hundredths. I can write it like that. Or, of course, that's equal to 0 0.7. Either way, it is 70%. Now, not all of these are that easy. Some of them are actually fairly difficult. And there's some repeating decimals in here. One third is a famous repeating de decimal. It's not exactly 30%. It's not exactly 33%. It's actually 33.3%, or that decimal is 0 0.3 repeating. This bar means it repeats. Well, let's go to, well, I'm going to get to that in a little bit. Stay tuned for that answer. Uh, we're going to do two ninths in just a second, but I want to talk about 316. That's another example where it's not exactly, um, it's not going to have an integer for uh, the percentage. And I'm going to show that there's going to be a decimal within the percentage. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm show the long division real quick here. So I have 16 goes into zero. Uh, th sorry, 16 goes into three zero times, and that of course is 16 times zero, um, which is zero. And then I have remainder three. I have that invisible zero. I'm going to drop down to make it bigger so that I actually can have 16 go into something. But anytime I in add that invisible zero, I have to place that decimal right there. So 16 goes into 30 one time. That is 16. I have a remainder of 14. Oh, this is not going to be fun. <laughs> so I have the remainder of 14. I have another zero. I'm going to drop down there. And now I have 140. Oof. How many times does 16 go into 140? Well, I know it doesn't go in 10 times. Uh, nine times would be 160 minus, I think that's too big still. So then I think it is eight. So I'm going to go eight just to test it out. So I have six times eight, that's 48. Eight times one is eight plus the four is 128. Could I have added 16 to that? I don't believe so. That would take me to 144. So I'm going to put, it goes in eight times there and I get 128. And then I have a remainder of 12. Well, I just did this math. So now I know that it's going to be 16 times 7. That's going to get me close after I drop down the invisible 0 to make it 120. So I know it's going to go 16 goes in 127 times. Stay tuned, okay? I know this is a long process. You can skip ahead if you need to. So 120 times, and let me see, 2, that goes 4, 7, 11. So that's 112, and I have a remainder of 8 this time, and then I have my last number, make it 80. And I think that's five, if I'm not mistaken, 16 times five, and it is. So I get 80, so that's five times, and this can be remainder zero. So I got 0 0.1875. So I'm gonna write that here, where is it? 0 0.1875, did I write that down right? I did. Okay, now this is where I like the moving the decimal place method, because what we're gonna do to make it into a percentage, we're gonna move it over twice, and that's 18, the decimal is now there, 75%. So you can have, as I kind of alluded to earlier, you can have decimals within the percents. Okay, so that's just something to keep in mind. In my last example, the repeating decimal. Let me go ahead and show how this works. So 9 goes into 2, 0 times. There's nothing you can multiply 9 by. The closest we can get is 0, and that's 0. So I have a remainder of 2. I'm going to place invisible zero to make it something that nine goes into, and that's two times. I need to place that decimal anytime I have that invisible zero, and that's 18. I have a remainder of two. Okay, so what does that mean? I'm going to put invisible zero, I make it 20, nine goes into 20, two times, and that's 18. I have a remainder of two, invisible zero, that's going to be 20. I think you're noticing something that I'm going to keep getting the same remainder and it's not going to go away. Well, that's a repeating decimal. Anytime you have that scenario where you're getting the same remainder every time, it's a repeating decimal. So we're going to write it as 0 0.2 repeating. But when I'm going to write it as a decimal, I need a couple places because I need to move it over twice, right? If I just move it over once, I don't want to get it confused with 20% 
okay, or 2% or something like that. So what I want to do is I want to write it out a couple times just to get an idea. So what I'm going to do here is I can move it over one, two times, and I get 22.2. And technically, I should have done this earlier, it's a repeating decimal within the percent. Okay, so I just wanted you to take note. It was approximately 33.3%. That's very close, but technically, to be 100% accurate, we needed to be repeating both in 22.2 and 33.3. There's a few more repeating decimals, just keep that in mind, but I really like this shortcut. Use that if you want to spend less time doing long division. If you want to see more videos like this, make sure to check out my Math Sound Managers playlist, and I look forward to seeing you next time right here on West Explains Best.